All right, this is going to be a comparison video between four games that I own. Zaya, Legend of a Drift System, Eclipse, Second Dawn for the Galaxy. Empires of the Void 2, and Twilight Imperium 4. And the first thing that we're gonna look at is the most obvious. We're gonna go look at looks. And to be honest with you, I'm really not gonna say a lot about looks. I'm gonna let you determine this. Here you see the ships. These did have a little bit of a wash. So they have um, a little bit more um, detail than probably would be normal. But uh, these are just a couple of samples right here of blue, yellow, green, and black. This is the home, that's the mothership. There. Here's the board, here's the tiles. So the outer rim tiles, the, these are the, the the third section, they're, they're beautiful. And some of them are taken straight from um, the Hubble. You see the components. There's the boards. What's nice about these boards is that they also have a flip side. You can also play the humans. Uh, all of them are flipped on the human side. I only have the aliens out right now. different components that there are. There's a little tray, manages your economy, your science, and your mechanics. Uh, material. Material, thank you. Material, and this goes up, and you get to upgrade these little cubes. Kind of goes further. All right, Zaya. What's uh, the highlighting feature of Zaya, or of course the ships, because they're all in color. And give credit where credit is due, Zaya is one of the first ones to put these ships on these little stands, these clear stands. Here's all your ships, resources, cards. Little tiles, got all these tons of ships. So there's the looks for Zaya. Empires of the Void. Two. This is uh, designed by Ryan Lockett. He is an artist. He designs and, and he paints and or does his, his own games. He designs all these, does all the art. Player boards right there. Cover of his box. And then, of course, Twilight Imperium 4, TF4. So here we go. Here's a player aid, or not player, player board, sorry. There's 17 races. Three of them out here. Card stock. Strategic cards, dice. There you go. That's your look for the first four games. Now, once we get past the appearance, um, talk about the quality. I cannot help but be impressed by Eclipse. The quality in this game, it just is so good. These tiles are beautiful, they're thick, there's no edging off of them. They're gorgeous. The ships are beautiful. Um, you can take however much you want to wash for the washes or not wash, whatever, but um, they're beautiful. They're all size different. What's neat about um, all of the different aliens is every alien is different, as you can see. These are four different species and they have four different ships. It's one of the only 
games it does that when you have these galactic battles. You got the enemy ships, they look gorgeous. The guardians, ancient people. The, so the quality of this is just so good. The stock of these boards is a little thicker than, than normal, which I really like. And I think it really holds up. I love the art. Um, it's very crisp. The way I describe um, Eclipse is clean. Here, they got this board. This changed everything for when this came out too. You can put all your technologies here and it holds it so you don't have to do anything. It's easy to pick up. And then these transform the game. Um, they're so, they're easy to manage. Now this is made by Game Trays. So it is plastic and you do have to be careful about denting it. Um, but the cubes are beautiful. You put the cubes in, go around. It's a very easy thing to manage and customize. And it's also a holder for everything about Eclipse. Try and do this with one hand. Holds all of your ships. Holds everything for the player. You just bring this out and boom, it's there. So quality, quality for Eclipse. Just really, really impressed uh, by the box, by everything. It's just good quality. Zaya. This game to me feels a little aged compared to some of the other ones. And I don't know if that's just a me thing or not. It doesn't mean anything. I still think it's gorgeous. My son thinks that Zaya is um, the prettiest to look at with all the different things going on in the, on the tiles, and I don't disagree. The nebulas are gorgeous, and there's a lot going on. What's great are these <laughs> are these ships. They're just awesome. Um, every one of them is painted, and they all look great. Um, over here you have some, uh, these are the ships. So these are pretty good stock, stock right here. Um, here's some frost damage some other damage. These are beautiful, so good components right here. Uh, these are also one of the first to come up with metal coins and they have gorgeous metal coins that are like space currency. Uh, here's those single ones and then they have the, the ones that are worth five, I believe. That was the best I can get right there. The economy board, card stock, there's lots and lots of cards. Cards everywhere. It's a fame tracker. So, um, quality here is fine. It's good and it's got some really neat standouts. And this game is all about dice. Ryan Lockett's Empire of the Void. So, uh, component wise, the board is gorgeous. It's very, very sturdy. Each one of these uh, planets right here, they're all, they take them all off. And so you, these can change different. This is very good stock. The card quality is fine. It's kind of thin cards, but um, beautiful nonetheless. Solid components. Very fun to touch and hold. He uh, made all of these ships. He molded all of these ships. Each one has a, is a little bit of a different one. These are their mother ships or home ships, however you wanna say it, the capital ships. Right there. And of course, not to be outdone, he's done his own currency as well. And he's got these beautiful metal coins. And then of course, he's got a five as well. Space currency, the dice, some extra things right there. Um, but this is very, very good. Uh, going inside of a box, again, Eclipse is just the cleanest. This, I put in little baggies everywhere and it goes in and it's fine. Um, but that's kind of how it goes. I don't have an insert for this game either. I use the insert that it came with which suffices. So um, the little baggies, I have little baggies for everything and it kind of fits in and I'm okay with it. 
Um, I will say the card stock or the, the, the stock on these tiles, I was very disappointed. Um, almost every one that I, I had to get these off. It was, it was kind of ordeal and watch, I won't be able to find any right now, but there's a lot of edging around these and it looked like it had been used for like, um, it'd been played like eight or nine times already before I even uh, had even touched it. Um, I wasn't very happy about that. Having said that, everything else is good. Ships look great. They have some neat functions where you can uh, turn them over for half of a damage. Put together these War Suns. No, no plastic stands for this one. Here's the card stock. Uh, this is very famous uh, Fantasy Flight cards. These are the tiny cards that they're using. And they use those for a lot of the different things. The player boards are gorgeous. And in fact, there's, there's a lot going on here. This tells you a ton of details. And also, you can get a backstory. Shows you just all kinds of stuff. Starting units, starting technologies here on the back. And then right here, the main board where you're gonna have everything, it's got all the different, it's got a little cheat sheet right there. It's right in there. And the box. Okay. So, what are these games, um, what are these games about? Let's go over this really quick. So, um, I have a little bit of notes here. So Eclipse, Eclipse is about building an empire. It is about building an economy. Right here, it shows you how much you're gonna start paying. So as you start using these tokens to occupy different territories on these, these systems, you're, you're gonna start owing money. But the, the planets are gonna start giving you benefits um this is a terrible tile but I, I pulled these all out just for examples here we go so right here this is for materials this is for currency and this is for science so every time you get one of these uh so if you control the sec this um this system this tile you could put your control token right here and you would have those three resources and you would come up here and you would increase the cubes for these so this tells you how many of those resources that you would get every turn. Here's your currency. This is the one that always needs to be higher than what you're gonna spend. So this is an economy game um, as well. Uh, but it's more than that. So you build your economy, you build up your science, you build up your materials. You do that so that you can come over here. You can get technological upgrades from different, uh, different elements. You can modify your ships, build your battleships. Uh, and customize those bad boys um, and explore the galaxy. So you have these tiles right here and depending on what sector you're in, you place the tile and you have to match the thing according to the rules. You place it in there and boom, now you've explored. And you get these little exploration tiles that when you go on there. And um, if you go there, you, you pick these up, you can either have two two victory points or you can get a little upgrade right here. All these tiles do different things. Here we go. What's cool about this one, see if you explored this one, this would give you a free technology for, um, that's awesome and you wouldn't have to have to spend all the money for it and try to get up to, to upgrade it. Um, as you are going throughout the turns, you're also finding technology. And the technology comes up over here. And so you put the different technologies that you find right here and you can buy these throughout the game. And it tells you right here for how many science that you need to buy these different ones. And you put those up here and then you upgrade. So this is very much building an empire and you're building your science, building material, building economy, getting technology, build, build, build. You explore and at the end of the, at the, well, I won't talk about what the end is, but that, that's the feel of this game. Again, it's a, it's a, it's a very serious game. 
is, uh, is my best way to describe it. It's crisp and clean and organized. Zaya, here is the contrast. So this is the crazy space cowboy type of one. Uh, if you think Firefly or Han Solo or uh, some ship in space like Dark Matter going throughout the galaxy and here you want to go from being a scum to becoming the most famous pilot or ship in the world, you know, in the galaxy. Here's your fame tracker and this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to get the most fame. And they're just having a good time. This game is all about rolling dice. Almost everything that you do, you roll dice. And you roll dice to see how fast you can go. You roll dice to see what you can shoot people. You roll dice to see if you got a 10 or if it's a 10 or below, then something bad's probably gonna happen when you roll this bad boy. Um, and nebulas and asteroids and um, debris fields. You can get hit by a sun. And in this game, if you die, you just reset. It's almost like a video game. You reset and you died, you suffer a little bit of a penalty and you keep on going. This is a game about trade. You can go pick up these mission cards right here. These mission cards will do different things for you. And oh, I wish I could get that color right there. Some of these you'll roll dice again to try to figure out what you have. Or some of them will say, hey, if you, uh, you get a, the smallest version of this, then you can get some money. So this is about getting money and getting outlaws to see the orange ones are bad. The cubes right there are trade. And this game is a lot about trade. So you go to a different planet, buy some resources, maybe drop off one and get some more money. Um, and then you go try to find that and then drop those off to another planet that could benefit from them. So you're going around different places. You gotta watch out for frost damage, space pirates. What's kind of cool about this game is you've got these space pirates that are just going around trying to shoot you as you're going. Nobody's playing them. You've got these mercenaries that you can go hire. You got this ship that's just kind of flying around this planet um, and these aren't even players. Um, here's just some examples of some ships that you have and everything. Right here, this is how you take your turns. This game is about modifying your ships. This ship has got some, some shield upgrades. Sorry about that, there we go. It's got some shield upgrades and it's got an engine. Then you got one over here that's just built for uh, blasters. It's got blaster blasters, and right here it tells you the dice that you get to roll. So the higher the dice, the better the chance that you have of doing that damage. Um, you know, and, and then maybe this ship is just about shooting missiles. So all these different things, you carry the cargo and go around, you explore tiles. So if I come over to this sector, um, I can, I'll pick up a tile right here and I'll place it down here. And that's how you explore in Zaya, get into finding out these different planets that you may need to go trade and get some money. You take that money and you can upgrade your ship from a small ship to a medium ship to a great ship. And all the meanwhile, you're getting more and more famous. All right, Empire of the Void 2. This game is about an adventure. This is a space adventure. The planets in this are absolutely gorgeous. So this game always puts things from Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, Stargate, sci-fi series, books that I've read, and it, and it puts those ideas into my head. Because of one, the art in these cards, and two, the little flavor text that he has below these, right there. I catch smugglers trying to take a hexile from Tanfu. And you find out that there's kind of feuds between some of these planets and that some of them don't like each other. One of the planets has these fungus um, problems that kind of will go across ships and destroy them. Um, there's an alien race out there that's destroying other, other races and you have to watch out for them. All these different things and they have a little bit of a backstory. And he has event cards for each of these planets that you play. And there's like eight events for each planet. And so each time you play, you only play with one of those event cards. So you get these different stories that unravel and have these different things going on. Um, up here, you're doing these minor upgrades. You get these little small boosts in technology. This is kind of uh, lots of things give you victory points. You get victory points from conquering these planets with these little cubes right here. 
the cube tells you that right there, that's one victory point. And you come over here, uh, there's another victory point. This shows you influence. Influence is um, kind of like an alliance between the planet. And whoever has the most influence will get three victory points. So right here is yellow and they would get three victory points for the influence that they have. And of course, if you come in and conquer a planet that you've already influenced, you're gonna lose that influence because they don't like you anymore. Um, got your little, your motherships and everything and your, got your, these are your grunt forces and then you got, um, that can hold into your ship right there. These are the spaceships. So unlike um, Twilight and Eclipse, these are your, are your additional spaceships. So you've got your mothership, then you've got these, and then you've got your alien races that are kind of like your, your ground forces that go in and hold the planets and stuff like that. So this is just a great time getting uh, victory points. Twilight Imperium 4. Um, this game is about uh, a lot of tension. This game is about meeting objectives. These objectives are what the whole heart of the game is, in, in my opinion. With these objectives, everybody is trying to get the same ones. And the, everybody's in the same galaxy. And after about two rounds, it starts to get really small. And the only way to get objectives is to get in front of people. It's get in their faces. It's to go take them out. Apologetically, you're, you're not their enemy. You're not going to decimate them. You're just, I'm sorry, I needed to get that planet to get this victory point. And so there's a lot of tension. And as the rounds go through, that tension builds. You have these strategic cards which give you special abilities. And they're a lot of fun to use. Um, you can get your, you can upgrade your, um, your different units that you have. It also has a small technological tree right here with these cards. And throughout the game, you can, you can advance and you can buy these. They've got yellow, red, green, and blue. Uh, and it shows you right here the cost of the future ones. So see that one has two. You need two green ones to build that. So it's kind of got a little tech tree going there that's kind of fun. Um... What else in this one? As you go through here, you also have, you have negotiations. So as I was saying, you know, hey, I'm sorry I, I did that. Hey, I'll give you some resources now, since I damaged your planet. So you've got negotiation going on here. You can form alliances. You can throw money at them. You've got trade over here and you've got commodities. And this is a, a big piece of the game that you wanna do. The planets that you occur, they could give you resources. Um, where's an example right here this one will give you three influence and one resource um, resources help you to buy your units they help you to get your technology so those are really valuable and then the influence that influences the agenda and the agendas over here are the political part of this and you vote on these and you vote on with the influence that you have from your planets and they have things that can be put into law for the rest of the game and change things if they're passed. Or they can affect a certain player for good or for bad. So you wanna exploit these agendas and you wanna exploit the other users so that they will side with you so that you can get them to do things. So that is Twilight Imperium 4. Let's talk about rule books. Rule book, Clips. It's a gorgeous rule book. Um, me personally, this, um, I had to do a lot. I, I, I did a lot of videos. This is a very clean rule book. Um, but for whatever reason, I had to go back a lot. It, um, it does, I mean, it's, it is very well done. It has a lot of um, references you see there on the side. Uh, just very, very, very clean. Um, once I've learned this rule book and I understood all the rules, it's a lot easier to go back and find things and um, get, get references and everything. But this was a tough net for me to crack, even while watching how to play videos and everything. Zaya. Um, Zaya is not complicated. Once you realize that this game is about dice, 
starts to break down, at least for me it did. See, all your movement right here, every, every vehicle needs to have an engine. That right there represents the dice that you're gonna roll. So you have, you have um, engines that go bigger so you can move further around during your turns. And these are kind of like your little actions you can do until they get exhausted. And you got these little energy to make sure you don't get stuck in space. Um, the, the rule book is fun. Uh, there's a lot of lore in here. Uh, he's got a lot of details about different planets and stuff like that. But this is not an intuitive rule book for me. Once I learn the rules, again, it's easier to reference, but I... I don't know this one of the this is one of the trickier rule books for me it is laid out very nice it's very pretty but it doesn't work for my brain uh, how he has everything separated but it is compacted very very nice and all the information is there all right empires of the void ryan lockett games always are tough for me to crack and i'm gonna ex try to explain why because Ryan Lockett games are go out and do whatever you want to do. Um, and, but, but in order to do that, you, um, you have to understand, okay, um, in order to go here, I need, I need X, Y, and Z. But before I can get X, Y, and Z, I need to do this. So it's kind of like a roundabout and a chicken and the egg type of thing. Which one do I do first? And it just takes me a while to crack that code. Um, this is very logical rule book, but it is not, I had to read it several times to be able to crack it. And it's a good rule book, it's not bad. Um, and it has a lot of references at the back for lots of different things that you wanna know about once you're playing the game and you just care about certain things. Um, but it just didn't, it didn't jive with me as much as I wanted it to. Uh, so this would, took me quite a bit to crack. None of these rule books are bad. I wouldn't say that at all. They all had very good details. It's kind of my preference. Now, Fantasy Flight, notorious for rule books, right? Look, two rule books and a whole thing of lore. And that's something to point out, right? Uh, Zaya has a lot of lore. Um, the lore in Empires of the Void is definitely found in the cards. This is a whole book on the lore. And then, of course, you've got those player boards with lore. So this is just dripping with backstory. Eclipse also has a whole entire thing of a backstory. It's like, uh, I don't know, 18 pages or something like that with gorgeous art. And um, so it's got its own lore as well. But here's what I'm going to say about Fantasy Flight. They, they've had four versions to figure this out and they did this learn to play was the best of all the fantasy flights that i've done this taught this teaches you how to play the game how to set it up exactly what you want and this is a perfect reference from a to z of all of the rules in more detail perfect exactly the way that i wanted i don't know why but this was not hard for me to learn um this was this was very intuitive. Um, I found it very enjoyable. I found it very easy. It had the right pictures, the graphics that I needed. It wasn't hard for me to find the answers. When I really wanted details, I could go to the rules. Um, I learned this game the quickest out of all four here, which really surprised me because of the reputation that this game has. But having said that, Twilight Imperium is not really a difficult game to understand or to play. So let will move us into the next category, which is going to be, got my notes here, length and, um, length and uh, East to Learn and East to Play. So I divide East to Learn and East to Play by two things. Most of these games, so Eclipse, I have played this with my 11 year old son and I played this with my um, eight year old son and he doesn't even know how to read. And so I help him out a lot. But basically I say, what do you want to do? And right here is what you do on your turn. 
you want to get experience, you want to research, upgrade, build, move, or have influence. Explore, so I did not experience, explore. And so he just tells me what he wants to do and I tell him how to do it. He did very well at this game. So ease to play, this was, this is very, very intuitive, very good. It just, it's not too hard. One of the hardest, the, the, the main concepts you have to understand is, you need to be careful with how much you spend here because you have to make sure you can pay for it on your currency. And then it's just going out and having a good time and attacking, rolling dice, and anybody can do that. So, a lot going on with this game, but again, very clean, very organized. So, props to that. Um, what, I, what I like about this is this has rounds. If you want to make this game shorter, you just shorten it in the round. That purple cube right there shows you it's in round two. And so if you want to make this a shorter game, you can do that. Um, this is, uh, the, the turns were going pretty good for my son and I when we were playing this. Um, it was going at a good clip. Zion, this game, again, could go on for however you want to. This is going to make it a pretty long game, but you can make it 15, 10, or five, uh, whatever you want. I found different things that you could do with this. If you want, you could maybe start with a level two ship, or you could just start with a ton more coins than you normally would. If you wanna speed things up and still get that good experience and upgrade and do everything that you wanna do. Um, ease to play. This is pretty dang easy. So um, again, if you know how to play and you're having somebody else come in and you're telling them how to play, you just say, what do you wanna do? You got your action card, this is your mission, follow it. And if you want, when you wanna move, look at your engine, roll the dice, this tells you how far you get to go. If you wanna use one of these bad boys, you can use it and you expend your energy and you go back up, it's just, it's not too bad. Now, having said that, there is a lot of bookkeeping in Zion. A lot of bookkeeping. And what I mean by that is that there's a lot to just keep track of all these different NPCs, which are very fun and are awesome, and they add some flair to this game, but you have to remember to do their different things. And um, when these cards start to come out, you have to start remembering the different cards that are out there. These change the game, and they have different things going on. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get a good picture. Um, they, they change the game in different ways, and as you keep going, and these are different things that people can go for and get fame points be the first person oh this is a terrible there you go jack of all trades Su successfully mine harvest and salvage in one turn so they're fun cards you get to do more but they start building up and there's just kind of a lot to keep up on this one all right empires uh learning this game it just it took me a while to figure it out but Having taught my daughter and my son and my other daughter how to play, all 11 and younger, um, it wasn't so bad. I did spend about 10 or 15 minutes explaining different things, but again, just being a, a, a secondary player and kind of a backseat and playing the game, it, it's not too bad. Here's what you do. Pick one of these. Do you want to move and attack? Do you want to research and build? So this is what I have to explain to them at the very beginning. Do you want to do a card action or diplomacy? Do you want to recruit or scavenge? And that's it. So you just pick one of these, and then everybody else does that same move. And then the next person goes. So I really like that about this game. It's a good mechanic. It helps things to just keep moving. Oh, uh, by far, Empires of the Void is the fastest game. This game is over in two and a half hours um, easily. And you can, you can make it longer. You can also make it shorter. Um, depend Because it's all about that deck right there. There's a card in there for that um, measures how long you have to play. And if you want, you can make it half or you can double it. But this game is about two and a half hours with four players. And Twilight. My son and I played this over two settings of two days. Probably about three hours each with three players, and we beat this game, well, no, we didn't. We quit at eight points. So, um, 
uh, it'd probably take about eight hours, which is about what they say it is. Um, being the backseat driver in here and just playing the game and not having to teach it or learn it. Um, there's a, there's not too, this not too bad. The main thing is you have to understand these cards and this is going to take a little bit of depth to understand, but there is a lot going on with these races. They have their different, they all have these special abilities right there. They've got special ability cards, which I don't have out here. Oops. Um, and, uh, they have their technological, they have these different technologies that, that they can have as well. So you have to keep track of that. And little by little, this game is gonna start having, you can have seven of these in your hand, these action cards, we can do random things. You can have these, these technological things that are all giving you these different abilities. So as you come out here and you got these different ability cards out here. So over time, there's a lot to look at. But the basics of this game is just not bad. Here's where you take most of your moves. This tells you how big each of uh, your fleet can be in each uh, system. A system is one tile. So right here it's three. So I can't have more than three big ships in one system. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really not that bad at all. Again, I played this with my eight year old son and um, he, he was able to manage himself pretty well in fighting and doing stuff. These command trips are a little bit tricky at the beginning, because, uh, but once you explain them, it's not too bad. You just explain, you put the command ship where you want to go, and then any of your ships that don't have a command token can go there. Um, I don't know what's longer, Twilight, Zaya, or Eclipse. I think they're all about equal. Zaya is, is, is pretty simple to reduce the amount of time by the fame points. With this game, I think you could do the same thing by the victory points, which is what my son and I did. Also, it's got a kind of a timer because once you expire all of these different uh, scoring, um, the game is going to end. Um, with Eclipse, same thing. You've got the score round. So they've kind of modified it so you can make it a little bit shorter uh, if you want to. But uh, yeah, I'd say Eclipse is going to take you a good three, four hours. Twilight's probably going to take you six to eight. And Zaya's going to... Man, that guy... <laughs> could be short, it could be long. But it really depends on how many fame points you have on that. And I would say this is probably going to be a good four-hour game as well. All right. There's my comparison for these four games. Hope you enjoyed. Hope it was informative. I know this is kind of long. Uh, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to lay out all four of these games side by side so you could see fresh with your eyes.